When we create a purchase order, a purchase order document is also created in the background. For the purchase order, once we receive the goods, we post the goods received and also here a document will be issued by the system. For this goods received, there will be one accounting document posted simultaneously. Because once we receive goods, the value of our stock will increase. However, goods movements in general are relevant for valuation if the accounting is affected. So this means when we receive goods, or we issue them, or we transfer them between company codes, which is also called intercompany stock transfer, then the goods are subject to valuation. So we will track their value along the way. Goods are normally not subject to value tracking when we transfer them within the company code, which is called intra-stock transfer. With that said, let's now look at the two types of prices we can set for our goods. First of all, we have the standard price. So let's imagine we have a total stock balance of 1000 pieces of pens. One pen is valued with a standard price of 2 euro. This means that we multiply the 2 with the 1000, which gives us a total stock value of 2000 euro. This amount would be debited on our stock account. Let's now assume that we receive the goods. However, not for a price of 2 euro per piece, but for a price of 3 euro per piece due to any reason. This means that our stock amount increases from 1000 pieces to 2000 pieces, as we received additionally 1000 pieces. The total value of the stock, however, is calculated as you can see over here. So we had 1000 pieces before, and now we purchase 1000 more pieces. Those 2000 pieces are always valued with a standard price, which is 2 euro. So this is a constant price that does not change. In the end, this makes 4,000 euro of total stock value, which we can see over here as well. As of the accounting entries, we can now see that our stock account, which was valued at 2,000 euro before, now increased by another 2,000. So in total, we have here 4,000. Then we have the GRIR clearing account. This account, this 30,000 actually, is nothing else than the quantity we received. So 1,000 pieces times the actual price, so the 3 euro per piece. 3 times 1000 is 3000. So in the GRIR clearing account, we will have, so to say, the real value. And then you can see the difference between our standard valuation and the actual value from the goods received. So 3000 minus 2000 would be 1000, which is accounted as an expense for price differences, as the price is actually increased in comparison to what we initially stated in the purchase order. Last but not least, we post an invoice receipt. Let's assume that for the invoice receipt, the price per piece will be 2 euro and 50 cents instead of 3 euro. So how is the total stock value calculated? First of all, with the invoice receipt, the amount of wood that we accumulated does not change. So we still have 2000 pieces in total. And as said, all we need to do is multiply those 2000 pieces with the standard price that does not change. So the total value of the stock is still 4,000, even though we purchased 1,000 of those pens for 2 euro 50. What happens for the accounting entries you can see over here. So first of all, quite important as always, the GRIR clearing account is now in balance. So we debit the 3,000 over here, as this account should always be in balance when posting the invoice. However, with the invoice posting, we have a liability against our vendor. And this liability is for 2,500 euro. This is because the value of the invoice receipt was 2.5 euro per piece, and we received 1,000 pieces. So 2.5 times 1,000 is 2,500. However, there's still a difference between the goods receipt value of 3 euro per piece and the invoice receipt value of 2.5 euro per piece. The difference is 3 times 1000 minus 2.5 times 1000. So actually it is 500 and we post this as an income from price differences. This is it for the standard price. Let's now look at the moving average price. We will take the same scenario. So we have an opening balance of 1000 pieces valued at a moving average price of 2 euro per piece which makes 1000 times 2, which is 2000. This we record as a debit in the stock account. Now we receive our goods again for 3 euro per piece. The calculation you can see over here. Our total stock value, first of all, with the initial balance, it was 2000. Plus we received 1000 pieces at a price of 3 euro per piece which makes a total stock value of 5,000 euro. The stock account increases by 3,000 euro. So we debit 3,000 and we have a total value of 5,000 here. And the GII clearing account 
will be credited with 3000 as well. Last but not least, we post the invoice received also for 2.5 euro per piece. The calculation would be we had our initial 1000 pieces valued at 2 euro per piece. Now with the invoice receipt, we have the other 1000 pieces valued at 2.5 euro per piece, which makes a total of 4500 euro as you can see over here. And to get the moving average price, we take the 4,500 and divide it by 2,000, which gives us 2.25 euro per piece. So in this way, you can see that the moving average price is really moving, so the price changes with the goods received and the invoice received. As for our accounts, this means the following. First of all, the GIR clearing account is balanced, so we debit 3,000 over here. Then we have a liability against our vendor of 2,500 euro, which is nothing else than the 1,000 pieces we received times the invoice received. And we have a credit to the stock account as the value of our stock decreases by 500. Because before it was valued with 3 euro times 1,000, which is the 3,000 over here. But now it's valued with 2.5 euro per piece. So 2.5 times 1,000, which is 2,500. And 3,000 minus 2,500 would be the 500 over here. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching this video till the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel to not miss any more videos. Activate the bell and see you next time.